My name is Chris Fine. Um, I'm going to be competing at 225. My off-season weight got up to 273 this off-season. This will be the last time that I suck down to a heavyweight. Um, today was a shoulder and bicep workout. Um, I'll keep it old school, man. I, d I don't like a lot of machines, man. Everything we do is a lot of free weight. So what you'll see is we'll warm up progressive overload with the shoulder press. I got a torn left pec, man. So it takes a long time for this thing to get loose and get some blood flow into it. Work up to one or two heavy sets. I believe we did 150s for a couple reps today. Then we went over to a, a machine. This isn't my home, my home gym, so I like to use a different type of machine if I see one here. Uh, did a couple of sets on that, nothing crazy. Then right back to the free weights, I believe we did an upright row. Um, man, my form isn't the strictest or the most strict. Uh, I like to just move weight, man. That's just what I enjoy to do. So we worked up to a heavy uh, drop set on the upright rows. Then I believe we went into a front raise and again, man, that's just progressive overload, one set, two set, three set, working up to as heavy as we can. That's just what I believe in. I believe, you know, putting some stress on the muscle, and that's what's going to make it grow. I don't want to beat it into the ground, so I don't do four or five sets of the same exercise. We'll work up to that one or two heavy set, and then we'll go from there and we'll just move on. Then I believe we finished the uh, shoulder workout with – we uh, finished the shoulder workout with some rears, rear delts. But – uh don't do a lot of those. I mean, we do do a lot of rears, but on Monday is a back day. So after we hit legs on Sunday, we'll go back to back on a, on a Monday. And our split just rotates, man. So every other Monday, we're hitting chest or back. So it just depends if we emphasize the front delt or the rear delt. So today, we ended with the rear. But if we were doing chest on a Monday, we would start with the rear delt to get some blood in there. Um, Okay. Yeah. Um, in the off season, man, my, I don't train my arms. I don't train my delts, you know, so today was a special occasion. We are in pre-contest. My off season split, man, I do a uh, heavy back day, take a day off, heavy leg day, take a day off, heavy chest day. And then we'll, on Saturday, we'll put that chest or that back again. So every other week we're hitting chest and back twice a week. I think this off season, we're going to hit legs twice a week. But again, to emphasize, uh, pre-contest the only time that we hit our arms and our delts. They just grow like weeds, man. So when I, when I diet down, my chest and my back would shrink, but my arms stay the same. So for me, for proportion, I don't really see a, ne a necessity to hit those in the off season because with all the heavy presses, the heavy rows, they're getting isolated anyway. Um, so Noxu. All right, so yeah. So past shows, man. Back in 2017, I did the Excalibur. I placed second in the heavyweight. But then in 2018, I won the overall of the Knoxville Classic. I was going to do the North Americans, but I just decided I wasn't ready. And uh, I want to make a big splash, man. So my, my goals moving forward is the USA Championships in uh, Las Vegas in July. And I will be a heavyweight, even though I competed as a super heavyweight at Knoxville. But again, this will be my last time sucking down. and. I don't plan on going just to show up, man. I, I'm going to be a front runner, and I'm going to make some noise for North Carolina and Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and so in, intensity wise in a workout, man, that's this is nothing special for the camera. This is how I train day in day out. Um, a little bit of background about me, man. I invested my life savings into a gym. The reason being is. I couldn't train at a commercial gym. I couldn't train at all the franchise gyms. So I took my life savings and kind of shut down my, my career, my life goals, and just opened a gym so I could train for this. So again, what you see is nothing special. Every day that I train is I'm trying to hit a new mark every time at the gym. I don't do pump days. I don't do all max out. Every day, every exercise that I, if I pick up a weight, is full intensity, man. That's just the only way that I know how. I don't believe in just, oh, get some pumping, blood in the muscle. I believe in going 100%. And then when you can't go 100%, know your limits and then back off. So if, if I do two exercises for a body part and that's all the gas I got in my tank for that day, that's it. I'm not going to do exercise three, four, and five just because you're supposed to fucking do it. I'm going to do what I can, maybe it's one exercise, two exercises, 
and that might be the whole workout that day. So if I can't create the same amount of energy or focus within my very first set into that last set, to me, that's a pointless set, pointless exercise. I don't think you're getting anything out of that, you know. So off season, we all get motivated and we all, you know, oh, I'm going to get up to this weight and be disciplined. And then reality kicks in about halfway through the off season. You're kind of like, fuck that. You know, I want to get a pizza. I want to get a taco. So, you know, about half and half, you know, about half clean and half dirty uh, bulk, but trying to tighten that up. But just a lot of calories, man. So I don't really count calories. Got to have this amount of carbs, this amount of fats, just a lot of clean food in my body in the off season and then when we start prepping man i clean it all the way up and i'll do more of a carb cycle so i'll have my low days and my high days and that's 100 percent, man i don't i don't steer off the diet so when i'm prepping for a show all that bullshit of grabbing a pizza here and there man that's gone you know it's exactly what my coach says to do right now i'm working with dave palumbo and yeah i've uh, i've been working with dave since i've been a teenager and uh, he's taught me everything and uh, I, I believe as you progress in the sport, you learn your body better than anybody else. So I honestly believe when you first start with the sport to learn nutrition, to learn the different approaches, you need a coach. However, as you progress into doing this sport for eight, nine, 10 years and so forth, I believe you start to understand it on a conceptual level of what you need to do for your body that being said, if you don't have the discipline to look in the mirror or to read your body and how it feels, you need a coach to keep you on the right path. If you can be disciplined and just look at your body like you're coaching one of your own clients, I think that you could best manipulate your body knowing how you respond to different carb, carb intake, different carb sources, different fat sources, et cetera, et cetera. So as I move forward, I'm probably going to take over my own off season, my own prep, just because I've been with Dave for, you know, on and off 10 years. And, uh, and honestly, man, I, gotta, I have to give the man credit where credit's due. I, I believe he's the most knowledgeable person in the sport of bodybuilding with, uh, with nutrition, supplement protocols, what goes on in the body. However, when it's, you, when it's you as the individual, I believe if you're disciplined enough, you'll be able to manipulate your own body and bring it in at the best if you can keep that discipline. Yeah, years, years and years and years of learning your body. But however, some people, when they start prep, they they can't. They can't say, oh, I just had this carb because they'll start feeling like shit. They'll have low energy. Say, oh, I need to carb up. If you can be honest with yourself and look in the mirror, the, regardless of how you look and say, okay, say I'm down four pounds this week, then you need a refeed or whatever you want to call it these days. People fucking do cheat meals and refeeds and shit. But if you can do, hey, I'm going to do an extra cup of rice because I'm down four pounds, cool. If you're maintain, your physique hasn't changed, but you feel like shit and you want to cheat, then you need a coach to hold you to that discipline level. So I played baseball growing up in my, in my teenage years, and uh, my brother got into a weight training class in high school. I was a younger brother, and he showed me this uh, magazine when I went to a local health spa, I guess you could call it. And uh, I didn't believe the magazine was real. I thought it was all photoshopped. I was probably 12 years old, you know? And I got suspended. I got OSS suspension. And my mom said, well, you're going to the, the fitness club with me. And uh, just uh, getting lost in that workout, man, of, of knowing that, hey, this is my effort. You know, just like anything, if you're studying to be a doctor, a lawyer, your own business, bodybuilding, it takes your effort, you know? And if you, if you, if you sit there, and you make the excuse of, oh, well, I'm not progressing in life because of this or that, that's a cop out to me. So when I was 12 years old and I felt that weight and then going week after week and I, I got stronger, maybe a little physique changes, you know, your diet's not that great when you're a teenager, but seeing that, uh, that strength increase just th through muscle activation, it becomes an addiction, man. Then you look in the mirror and you say, dang, I, I got a little bit of a bicep vein. I got a little bit of chest development. Man, uh, I like this, man. And so then, as we started training for baseball, I fell in love with more of the uh, strength and conditioning part through high school. And uh, I was a pretty good athlete. I, pr I probably could have played D1 Division One baseball, but I just fell in love with what I could do as an individual sport with my body rather than a team sport. And, and then so getting into bodybuilding, I was in the gym, I was about 17 years old, 
and I knew this female that competed, and she said, man, you should do the, you should do a show. And I just laugh, man, because, you know, we, we wear these posing trunks, and people call them Speedos or thongs or whatever. I said, man, you, you get the fuck out of here. I ain't, I ain't wearing that, you know. And then uh, this other kid said, man, we went to her show. Dude, you should do the teen class. You would win. So I said, man, I'd, I'd do anything once within reason, you know, to see if I like it. And uh, I did that show, and I won it when I was 18. And then I said, well, dang, what's the next step as a teenager? Do the teen nationals. And I got, I had no business, man. I got hum, I got humiliated on that stage in 2010. But uh, I'm not a person that quits, man. I'm a, I'm a person that, if I got my ass beat, I'm gonna say, hey man, shake your hand, you beat my ass. But I guarantee you next time, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna be better. And I'm gonna learn from that experience. I believe in today's uh, day and age, man, you get beat or you go through uh, some adversity, fucking quit, man. You can't quit, you know, and that's not just in bodybuilding. I believe that's in life, you know, in life. Uh, it's not going to go as you plan, you know, if if anything, you know, I use a doctor, you know, because that's a hard road to go through school and everything. But you don't think you're going to fail a test or or fail a class or, you know, maybe your your grandparent die, uh, passes away or your parent dies. You're going to have adversity in life. It's you as the individual, how you take that and move forward with it. You know, I just think uh, today's day and age, everybody's fucking soft, man. You know, nobody wants to go through shit to develop themselves as a person. So, I mean, not to get off track, but everything that you go through, positive or negative, the way you interpret that or take it in on your perception base is going to develop you as a person. God is developing you as an individual. So if you just fucking quit, I mean, that's, that's going to be your life, man. You're just going to be surrounded with negativity your whole life. So that's how I, what I believe in. You know. <laughs> to to be honest with you, man, uh, the only people that I I have to thank in this part point in my life is my mom and my dad. You know, uh, people in my life who I've called brothers and sisters have came and have came and gone out of my life. People that I've you know put a hundred percent trust in or said I love you to have came and gone. But uh, the two people that have have tested me who have have you know been scared to believe in me but have stuck with me 100 percent by my side is my mom and my dad and so i i gotta say i love you mom and dad and I, I really appreciate you know standing next to me as far as my gym man uh, it's a morganton mecca gym in morganton north carolina it's a old hole in the wall gym exactly how i envisioned it i don't have showers i don't have saunas i don't have freaking massage chairs but if you want to make a change in your life and a, a change in your mentality and physical physique definitely check us out man because we've got all the equipment that you need to change uh physically and not just physically but change your mindset man and uh, go after it and get it